Ever since the Mirage 3E was introduced to War Thunder quite a few months ago now, it has received quite a poor reputation just for really being the worst top tier that was added to the game at the time. Time has passed, it's not that bad of a plane anymore, and really it's not even a top tier. That's half the reason it's not a bad plane anymore. It sits at a battle rating of 10.3, which is exactly the same battle rating as the Mirage 3C. The armament of the Mirage 3C and the Mirage 3E are the same, but the flight performance of the 3C does trump the Mirage 3E, because the 3E is considerably heavier than the 3C, and you are going to feel it when you're flying the plane. But the Mirage 3E has flares and the 3C doesn't. Now a long time ago, I'm talking way long ago, I would still have taken the Mirage 3C over the 3E despite not having flares because the flight performance of the Mirage 3E at top tier was just honestly that bad. At battle rating 10.3, however, I think it's just really worth having the flares and sacrifice a little bit of flight performance to have them. On top of that, the flight performance isn't quite as different as it was between the 3C and the 3E on release. Now, the uh, the Fox 1 missile, the M5 or the R530, I don't know what it's called, that big boy underneath the Mirage is, it's not the best. It's a 15G missile, it's incredibly slow, but god I love it. It is so satisfying to use, I love watching it fly to the target, and if you get the occasional kill, they are quite rare, then it it just brings me the utmost joy. Of course you get two magic missiles as well, and these are fantastic, 30G missiles, very fast. Uh, a little bit more range, if not pretty much the exact same range of the AIM-9J, but they do not have a maximum overload during launch, so you can be pulling as hard as you want to launch these missiles, and they will come off the rail on top of that. They have an extremely wide field of view, so you can kind of uncage that seeker a little bit in a very large area. This really comes in handy with pulling lead before shooting your missile, and on top of not having any of that maximum G overload, you can give your missile quite extensive lead at some pretty close ranges while pulling some pretty hard G's. The Magics also have radar slaving which does come in handy once in a while. That is also something else to note between the 3E and the 3C Mirage is that the 3E does have a better radar. It will be a little bit better at guiding that big boy underneath if you choose, the, choose to use the radar version. There is an infrared guided version of that missile. I do not use it though myself as it is only rear aspect unlike something like say the R23 or the R24. At that point, I just don't really see the point if it's only rear aspect. 15 Gs, it's probably not going to net me that many kills, so I'd rather just go for the all aspect radar version. I don't have a whole lot of clips to talk about to really go over with this plane. This game was kind of just mediocre. Uh, it's what you're going to be doing a lot of in the Mirage 3E if you're going to find yourself any success. I'm just picking off targets that really aren't paying attention to me. You have to find the targets that you think aren't paying attention. Look for people that are kind of engaged with other players, you know, your teammates and whatnot come from sneaky positions and just see what you can do. In the end of the day, you are a Mirage, you're going to bleed a lot of speed. You don't really want to be noticed, it's a pretty passive plane, so in, usually if I get up tiered, which is most of the time, I'm going to bring my plane to considerable altitude. The reason I do this is because if I do get into trouble, I need to be able to maneuver hard, and if I maneuver hard, I'm going to be bleeding speed. So I get that altitude as a bit of energy in the bank that I can store for when things go bad. I'm going to need to get some speed back. Speaking of getting speed back, things going bad and bleeding energy, there's an F4E, and he can pull some pretty high AOA. I really want to make sure that he doesn't get the Vulcan on target because that'll absolutely shred me, even 1.2 kilometers away. So I'm pulling really hard bleeding a lot of speed, and as I'm starting to bring him in close here, I'm getting a little sketched out. He is bringing the nose around, he does save a lot more speed than me in that turn. And so at this point, I could keep dogfighting this guy, but I need this to end as quickly as possible. I don't want to be a floating kite the entire time, just open to third parties. So I pop the air brake a little bit, I cut my throttle, and I just try to bleed as much speed as possible, get him to overshoot. If I'd have controlled my plane a little bit better, I'd have had my guns on target earlier, but that certainly works. And since I did bleed all that speed, I'm very thankful I've climbed because I get to dive down to the deck at this point and get a little bit more speed back. It's going to keep me more defensive. I'm going to be able to put up more of a fight if third parties start coming in now. And it's just all around not a bad idea to give yourself some altitude. There are situations when you're flying the Mirage, you're going to have no choice but to start bleeding speed and force overshoots. Otherwise, you're simply going to die and you need some altitude in the bank to to be able to cash in that altitude for speed once you have none. Now I'm going for a magic shot there on the F4, unfortunately I believe he flared it or something like that, but there are 
a considerable amount of planes on my tail here and I don't want to just turn around and dump even more speed. I've got a pretty good amount of speed right now, Mach 1.08, and it's pretty hard to get it back in the Mirage unless you're diving and gaining speed from altitude. So I'm just going to fly in a straight line, uh, I'll bleed this missile here and essentially just keep on running until I feel that I've got enough separation and or some of these guys get bored. Thankfully the F4J looks like he got a little bit bored of chasing me. There is an F5C on my tail which is a very scary plane when you're in the Mirage 3E. Luckily for me F5C players tend to just not be the most experienced jet players in the game and that does not necessarily mean that I'm 100% confident in going into a dogfight. I am going to keep my speed up for a little bit longer. The F4J is coming back. I do have to assess the situation. Here's the situation. The F4J launched a missile behind the F5C. I cut my burner right when I saw that missile launch because I was just hoping that the A9G would switch tracks between me and the F5C. That is exactly what happened and that felt really good when it happened. I did giggle to myself a little bit and that leaves me one versus one with an F4J and I am a lot more confident in a dogfight with an F4J because while yeah he can choose to just not dogfight at least I will be able to stay out of his guns I'm not gonna be quite as hard-pressed to kill him as I would in F5C and at the very least I can also just do exactly what I did to that F4E bleed some speed force him out in front of me if he does choose to commit to a dogfight that's exactly what he does I get some shots in with the defas defas not the most damaging cannons at all at top tier jets right now uh, they're actually quite weak in my opinion. They really struggle to get some actual critical damage in. If you see your def is doing critical hits, which you always will, that's all they do is critical hits. Uh, how critical the hit is is rather questionable. But nonetheless, we do manage to finish him off there. There's another plane coming in. I noticed where he was coming from, how fast he was, and I knew that if I maneuvered in that specific way, inwards towards him diving toward the ground he just couldn't hit that shot if he tried he'd have ended up crashing into the ground because he just wouldn't be able to pull out in time i am in a pretty hairy situation here i've got two phantoms so i have to be a little hyper aggressive the f4j was coming head on i will gladly take the head on i can pull some very hard aoa at the speeds i'm flying right now and able and i'm able to get out of his guns pretty quickly and Unlike him, I didn't commit, therefore he takes a crit from the defas, I don't. And at the time, it appeared that the F4E was just returning to base, and it boosted my confidence a lot because now I think I'm one versus one with this F4J once again. Now it turns out the F4E actually doesn't really need to go to base, and therefore leaving his teammate in this situation is a critical mistake, and it's really going to cost them the game. I am one versus one with the F4J right now, so I'm able to start turning, doing what the Mirage can do. Uh, however, if you do get on low speeds, understand that you're not going to be getting that speed back once you're out of the turn. You're kind of going to be sitting, kind of going to be a sitting duck, excuse me. So you want to be very careful about when you choose to turn. Speaking of which, here comes the F4E. I'm super slow. I got to dive down. I pop some chaff, hoping to avoid a Sarlock. And I managed to stay out of the nose position of that Vulcan. And I, once again, have to be extremely aggressive. I am one versus two versus two phantoms. So I just kind of dump all of my energy, pull my nose as hard as I can to that F4E. He thought he had me nice and stalled out. He thought he was in an advantageous position. It turns out he wasn't. He wasn't expecting the missile. When he finally noticed it was coming, it was just too late to flare away. He probably didn't even cut his afterburner on top of that. So now it is officially a 1v1 with me and the F4J. And unlike the F4E, the F4J seems to actually have to go back to base. So we're going to cut right back to where I was chasing him down. I've kept my eye on him the entire time. I know exactly where he is. And I decide that it's probably a good play to use this cloud here. I want to have my missile timed perfectly so that right when I break free of the cloud, I'm able to get a lock on him. And he probably isn't even going to know I'm there. I've got the cloud coverage. I'm coming from above him. There's really no way he's going to actually notice me. Unfortunately, my plan doesn't work out exactly how I wanted it to. It's at just about this point right here. I click my missile button and no self helming missiles. Well, that's okay because really I can just shoot him anyways. He's not going to have any idea I'm coming. I came through the clouds. I came through altitude and he's really not going to be too happy about his death right here. But hey, that's okay. He ends up uh, calling me some name, I guess, or something. Not yet. Calls me a coward, yeah. He had to land. That's not really my fault. Should have managed your fuel better. I'm not going to let you land and then take off and then come kill me. I want to win the game. Sorry. Sounds cringy. Maybe. Sure. Whatever. But I like playing the game trying to win. And if that's how you win, so be it.
I also don't let people land in J out and leave the game for free. Trying to save repair costs, that seems to be the big thing these days, is when you're the last alive, you run to your airfield and J out because you can't afford to repair your plane, in which case you really shouldn't be playing it in the first place. You don't get a free pass just because you're the last guy alive on your team. I'm sure your teammates would have loved the opportunity to J out and save the repair costs. We're going to jump into another game where... Really, again, it's pretty much what you're going to be doing in the Mirage. You want to be kind of passive for the most part. You don't want to be getting into too much heated fights. If you notice that there's a lot of people looking at you at one time, a lot of people coming after you at one time, you're probably already going to be dead. And at the very most you can do is just run to your teammates and hope that they help get you off someone. I noticed that the MiG-23 is trying to turn back around toward me, so instead of going to that furball off my left wing right there, I decide to extend a little more to the right. That way he's going to have to turn more to actually get a missile off on me. He's going to be slow. It's going to increase the amount of time between his turn and getting on target. And therefore, I should stay out of range of his R60. Once I've noticed he switched targets, I'm going to switch targets as well. That MiG-23 MF did not expect the head-on aspect magic. And now that this MiG-23 is looking at something else, I'm able to sneak a magic up his butt too. And that pretty much summarizes top tier really is you want to just try to shoot at people that don't see you or not paying attention to you. Even if they do pay attention to you at one point, doesn't mean they're going to the entire time. You got to find that window. Unfortunately, my Fox 1 missile just kind of goes off and tracks nothing. I'm not sure what that was all about. Luckily, we do get a gun kill on him and that finishes off an MLD, a very, very scary MLD. But there are two, even three planes coming our way here. This M er, Big 21 MF probably isn't paying attention to me so I was gonna try to get a gunshot in there unfortunately he pitches up last second not sure if it's because he noticed me or because a missile was coming in either way I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get a kill on that one and again that's pretty much just how I play the Mirage at top tier I'm gonna be taking that altitude at the start of the game most of the time just to give myself a little bit of padding if things start to go south I'm gonna have to pull really hard on top of that you can just go faster at altitude in general so if things do go bad, I have some altitude underneath me, I can get some speed back after having bled speed in the first place, but if you do get lucky and you get that down tier, you don't have to be passive, you don't have to take altitude, you really don't have to do anything. In a down tier, which I'm not really going to show this video because I hardly ever get any, but I will say that if you do get a down tier, you can be pretty much ag as aggressive as you want in the Mirage. You're going to be significantly faster than pretty much everything, half of what you shoot at at down tiers don't even have flares so your magics are pretty much two free kills every time and even many planes don't have rwr and if you get lucky enough you can get that fox one kill the very satisfying 15g kill and it's just a whole load of fun in that rare down tier i would still shy away from turn fighting in the down tier you know don't just go turning for the first plane you see don't bleed all of your energy you're not gonna get it back that quickly and yes you do have flares you can keep some missiles off of you it's really just not that worth it. You'll probably want to stay fast for most of the game as really any jet you'd want to stay fast for most of the game. And you really have to understand when you're able to bleed some speed for the dogfight. That's Viggen. I thought he'd run right into those bullets, so I stopped shooting. He ends up pitching up and dodges them on like 3 miles an hour. Unfortunate for me, but I do think I am going to kill him a little bit later here, if not within a couple of seconds. But again, back to that down tier scenario. Uh, I think the best way to play the Mirage 3E in a down tier if you want to just go for wins is just kill whatever you can. And that sounds silly because, like, obviously, but I mean, target prioritization isn't necessarily that important when you're in something like a Mirage in a down tier because, like I said, not many things have flares. You know, the F-105 doesn't have flares, MiG-19s, uh, you name it. You just want to shoot as many missiles as you can at these targets that don't have flares, and what that's going to do is it's going to give you a very early game numbers advantage. And by taking that numbers advantage, you're decreasing the amount of targets that your teammates are going to be going after. And therefore, you're going to have a higher saturation of teammates going after a low saturation of enemies, and basically you'll be outnumbering people for most of the game. I don't care if it's the most useless aircraft on the enemy team, if you have an opportunity to kill it, take it. Everyone you can eliminate in the match, especially early game, the better. And the Mirage is very good at that in a down tier. Again, nothing has flares really. Uh, very few planes do. On top of that, you're faster than pretty much everything. You have a Fox 1 missile that's pretty damn good. Better than what the F4E gets, I'm quite sure. 
though you only do get one of them, and your radar is pretty nice as well to guide that missile in. I think most of you will find the Mirage 3E quite an easy aircraft to play in a down tier, that's also part of the reason why I wasn't too stressed about getting footage of a down tier. Uh, on the flip side, the Mirage 3E is rather difficult in an up tier. So once again, you want to play passive in the up tier, you don't want to be leading the fight, you want to make sure some of your teammates get into combat first, you want to fall, follow in right behind them and see what you can clean up and get people not paying attention. That's going to do it for the Mirage 3E, I am going to be gone for a little while so I'm not quite sure when the next video is going to be, so until then, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something from the video, most importantly, I hope we'll see you on the next one. See ya.